MMA flicks and chill. MMA flicks. What's up, guys? Welcome back to MMA flicks and chill. So this card 297 is been confusing me the entire time. I mean, I was looking at the card, like the prelims, the early prelims. <clears throat> Did you guys know that Jan Blokovic was and Dominic Reyes was scheduled on the early prelims, at least according to the UFC website? I'm looking at it right now. So yeah, Jan was scheduled to fight tomorrow in the early prelims. I thought that was a little weird. Like, wasn't it just a year or two ago we're watching Jan as the main card, and now he's in the early prelims? Um, he was going to fight Alexander Rockick, but that fight got canceled. I need to look into why. Does anybody know why that got canceled? Another one that got canceled was uh, Dominic Reyes. And he was fighting Carlos Olberg. Before each fight, I kind of go and just research who's on the card, the order they're fighting in. And if I see anything interesting, I look into it. For the most part, I like looking at undefeated records. I keep a close watch on that. And, you know, people that have lost maybe once or whatever. Because those are typically the the ones you see coming up in the UFC that turn into stars. So I like finding them, you know, as early as possible. Also, a buddy of mine is fighting um, in Mexico on the Mex on the Mexico card. And his name is Ricky Tercios and he's fighting the 18 year old uh, Rosas junior kid. So that's going to be cool. Ricky Tercios is a beast. I saw him, was it Fury? Yes. I saw him win the Fury belt uh, like eight, nine years ago. So he's a wild man. So we'll be covering that too. And by the way, I haven't done a video in probably three or four months for MMA Flicks and Chill. So my apologies on that. But now that I have a decent setup, I'll be back. I have nice live stream software. I have no reason not to make more videos. So you guys... We'll be staring at this mug a little more. Okay. All right. So let's see. We are looking at 297 preliminary card. <clears throat> okay. People I haven't heard of. And then the Surhi City and Ramon Tavares. Um, I was looking at this. And what I found interesting, they fought each other the last time they fought. This is September 5th of 2023. So, yeah, I guess he won Dana White's Contender Series. Um, sir, he did by knockout. But I guess this is his debut into the UFC. And they're fighting again. So we'll see what happens. It must have been a good fight. Uh, I haven't seen any of the recent Dana White Contender Series. So... I don't really know. Um, I don't really know what's going on there, <clears throat> but Surhi City is ten and one. It's got ten wins, one loss. So that's a fight I'll be paying attention to. Uh, the next is right after them: Charles jo uh, Jordan and Sean Woodson. Sean Woodson is ten and one, so that'll be an interesting fight. And then let's move into the main card. The main card right off the bat, we're getting Arnold Allen and Mobsar Ev. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Evoev, Evoev, and he is undefeated at 17 and 0. Let's look him up. Mobsar Evoev record. All right, he's been in the UFC a minute. I don't see any huge notable names of people he's beat yet, but um, he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fights in. This is his eighth fight. Um, 
his last two fights was Dan Ige and Diego Lopez. So Dan Ige, you know, we know him. But yeah, he's fighting Arnold Allen. So he's undefeated, probably going to win. Um, Arnold Allen's no punk, though. 19 and 2. That'll be a good fight. Next, we have Chris Curtis and Mark Andre Barrialt. And Chris Curtis is 30 and 10. 40 professional fights. Jeez. Um, he, he didn't seem like, uh, he, he's never really had that big of a presence, you know, like in the presser, he, like, he was just there. Neil Magny, man, this is a guy that can't catch respect anywhere. He's a good, seems like a good dude, um, shows up on weight, does his thing, you know, think he's ranked, but just someone that's never like, eh, okay. Like when he was talking at the presser, people weren't even listening. They were just booing too, too loud. It was crazy. Um, and we all know what happened with Ian Gary. By the way, speaking of Ian Gary, look at this meme. <laughs> all right. So he's fighting Mike Mallet, which, you know, he was, I think I just watched the Guru video, the MMA Guru video, and he referred to Mike Mallet as the Canadian Michael Chandler. Because he's like the company man, you know, he's saying all the right things. He's connecting with the people, you know, he's, he's just the marketable one, you know? <clears throat> so, and then after that is the co-main, which is Raquel Pennington and Myra Silva at the presser. I got to say Silva looked, what's the, what's the word? She looked, um. Like, she knew she was supposed to be dramatic, but couldn't really speak that well of English. But she, know, she knows what she's supposed to do. She's got all these lights and cameras and people in front of her. She just looked kind of like a fish out of water a little bit. and But I don't know. She, I just got an acting vibe from her. She's a beast, though. So I'm curious who you guys think is going to win that fight. I'm going to lean towards Silva. And then we have Sean Strickland and Drickus Duplessis. And most people are going with Drickus. Sean's been an interesting, fun, wild ride. I think it's pretty crazy the way pop culture has been. Well, just not pop culture, but our society has been. We've been like a seesaw. You know, the they're... Eventually, we got to balance out a little bit, but it's like we're like a seesaw. The balance is all off. You know, during COVID, it's like, um, at, you know, the the woke, the left, they're all up in arms and they're like trying to just, you know what it was like? It was like being married to a bitchy wife and being stuck at home with her constantly. That's what COVID was like, being stuck at home not to leave the house. You just got to stay there and take it. That is the way the woke left kind of made everybody feel like they're just constantly in your face and judging you and trying to get you to say something that they don't like just so they can pounce on you for it. And now I think the seesaw has gone whoop, because now we have like the Sean Strickland's and like just going the complete other direction, you know, misogyny, um, mildly racist, you know, like, like, I don't know. It's just, we need balance. We need balance. It's too seesaw these days. It's like, you know, and it's just, I think a lot of times it's people chasing clout. Because there are certain things you can say these days. And if you say them, you're going to have thousands of people cheering you on. And then you're going to have thousands of people wishing your death. So that's the world we live in now. Um, I like to stay neutral. Uh, I just kind of, it, 
like I'm more of an uh, observer. I observe the way things go. And then I decide logically with how I like to respond to it. And uh, normally I go in a completely di different direction. It's like if mom and dad are fighting and I'm like, hey, did you see what the dog is doing over there? That's more like me. I'm not going to pick a side. I'm not going to pick mom or dad. I'm going to go do something else. Because what's the point? Next week, the energies and moods of shift. This is just a weird social collective relationship that's pretty dysfunctional. I'm not trying to be in a relationship like that with anybody. Anyway, so Sean Strickland, he's an entertaining character. Something interesting that I thought about between Sean Strickland and Drickus, their dynamic, you heard about Sean Strickland like going public and saying, hey, if if Drickus says that stuff about, you know, my past, my childhood again, you know, it's we're going to have a problem. I'm going to go to jail. It'll sabotage the fight, all that. Um, and then he's, of course, catching heat because he, you know, the way it reflected back on it to the community is that he can dish it out, but he can't take it. You know, I think he can. It's when you have this much attention on you, it's easy for things to get out of hand and out of like where you intended it to go. You know, he's kind of a live wire and it's just going to go where it goes. But it is what it is. I think it was interesting because, you know, Drick has handled it really well, I think. I, I think he's very, I don't think, I know he's very smart. He's very intelligent because the way he responds to things is per almost perfectly. Um, when Sean was just going after everybody, when he first initially made that, I'm going to beat, I'm going to beat your ass. Like your dad beat you or whatever. When he made that comment, he was just mirroring Sean and Sean even admitted it in the last presser that he got him. He, he said, I'm, I'm the one that's usually giving it out and seeing how people respond, but he actually, he got to me, he got me. And I think that there was a conversation without the camera on between Sean and uh, Duplessis where it was like, Duplessis was probably like, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I thought this was your thing. So I just was giving it back to you since nobody really ever gives it back to you and you got upset. And then Sean was like, I know I shouldn't have got upset or whatever. I think that that sort of conversation probably happened behind closed doors. And so Drickus is, I love the quote that he gave, I think to the countdown, he said, look, that last interaction, my only goal was to win on the mic and I did. So I won that. And now I'm going to win in the cage. That's all I'm focusing on now. So because they were kind of trying to be like, oh, well, Sean said this. Are you still going to you know, talk shit about him at the presser? And since that conversation happened behind closed doors, I think that Jerkis was just like, you know, I already won that. I already won that. So I'm just going to focus on winning the fight now. And it was a classy a classy good way to answer that question. So anyway, I'm looking forward to this. For the first time, um, I will be going live and doing a companion for a live UFC event. So if you guys want to join me, you can. Uh, UFC 27, I think I'm going to join in mm, probably only the main card. I'll probably only be live during the main card. So I think that these companions are cool on YouTube when when uh, commentators such as myself do them because, quite frankly, if you can't afford the pay-per-view, you can hear a commentator talk, tell you everything that's going on live, like, and it's perfectly fine. You won't hear it. You won't see it. But I'll tell you everything that's going on. I mean, uh, I'm joining another group, so we may merge our videos together, have conversation. I'll hang out and watch UFC 297 together. 
and see who's going to be crowned champion or new champion. So let me know who you guys think is going to win between Drickus and Sean and who you want to win between Drickus and Sean. So I want to know both who you think is going to win and who do you want to win? Because that's not always the same thing. So if you like the content, leave a comment, like, subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers. I think I'm right at around 400. I'd like to hit 1,000 by my birthday, August 8th. So let's make it happen, guys. I can only do it with your help. Share with your friends, and I'll see you for UFC 297 for the companion. Ring the bell. Thank you for kicking in with MMA Flex and Chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell. Ring